stranger coming along might just walk over it and fall in. But they didn't want to fill it in. It had been such hard work digging it. Besides, they all had a sneaking fear that the Iron Man might come again and that the hole was their only weapon against him. At last they put up a little notice. Danger. Keep off. To warn people away. And they left it at that. Now the little boy Hogarth had an idea. He thought he could use that hole to trap a fox. He found a dead hen one day and threw it out onto the loose soil over the trap. Then towards evening he climbed a tree nearby and wailed and waited. A long time he waited. A star came out. He could hear the sea. Then, there, standing at the edge of the hole, was a fox. A big red fox, looking towards the dead hen. Hogarth stopped breathing and the fox stood without moving. Sniff, sniff, sniff out towards the hen, but he did not step out onto the trap. Slowly he walked around the wide patch of the raw soil till he got back to where he'd started, sniffing all the time out towards the bird, but he did not step out onto the trap. Was he too smart to walk out there where it was not safe? But at that moment he stopped sniffing. He turned his head and looked towards the top of the cliff. Hogarth, wondering what the fox had seen, looked towards the top of the cliff. There, enormous in the blue evening sky, stood the Iron Man on the brink of the cliff, gazing inland. In a moment, the fox had vanished. Now what? Hogarth carefully, quietly, hardly breathing, climbed down the tree. He must get home and tell his father at the bottom of the tree but at the bottom of the tree he stopped he could no longer see the iron man against the twilight sky had he gone back over the cliff into the sea or was he coming down the hill in the darkness under that high skyline towards hogarth and the farms then hogarth understood what was happening he could hear a strange tearing and creaking sound The Iron Man was pulling up the barbed wire fence that led down the hill and soon Hogarth could see him as he came nearer, tearing the wire from the fence post, rolling it up like spaghetti and eating it. The Iron Man was eating the barbed fencing wire. But if he went along the fence eating as he moved, he wouldn't come anywhere near the trap, which was out in the middle of the field. He could spend the whole night wandering about the countryside along the fences, rolling up the wire and eating it, and never would any fence bring him near the trap. But Hogarth had an idea. In his pocket, amongst other things, he had a long nail and a knife. He took these out. Did he dare? His idea frightened him. In the silent dusk, he tapped the nail and the knife blade together. Clink, clink, clink. At the sound of the metal, the Iron Man's hands became still. After a few seconds, he slowly turned his head and the headlamps and the headlamp eyes shone towards Hogarth. Again, clink, 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 went the nail on the knife. Slowly, the Iron Man took three strides towards Hogarth and again stopped. It was now quite dark. The headlamps shone red. Hogarth pressed close to the tree trunk. Between him and the Iron Man lay the wide lid of the trap. Clink, clink, clink. Again, he tapped the nail on the knife. And now the Iron Man was coming. Hogarth could feel the earth shaking under the weight of his footsteps. Was it too late to run? Hogarth stared at the Iron Man, looming, searching towards him for the taste of the metal that had made that inviting sound. Clink, 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 went the nail on the knife and... Crash! The Iron Man vanished. He was in the pit. The Iron Man had fallen into the pit. Hogarth went close. The earth was shaking as the Iron Man struggled underground. Hogarth peered peered over the, the, the torn edge of the great pit. Far below, 
Two deep headlamps glared up at him from the pitch blackness. He could hear the Iron Man's insides grinding down there and it sounded like a big lorry grinding its gears onto a steep hill. Hogarth set off. He ran. He ran home. Home with the great news. And as he passed the cottages on the way and as he turned down the lane towards the far, his father's farm, he was shouting, The Iron Man's in the trap! And we've caught the Iron Giant! When the farmers saw the Iron Man wallowing in their deep pit, they sent up a great cheer. He glared up towards them. His eyes burned from red to purple, from purple to white, from white to fiery, whirling black and red, and the cogs inside him grounded and screeched, but he could not climb out of the steep-sided pit. Then, under the lights of the car headlamps, the farmers brought bulldozers and earth pushers, and they began to push in on top of the struggling Iron Man all the earth that they had dug when they first made the pit and that they'd been piled off to the side. The Iron Man roared again as the earth began to fall on him. But as soon, but soon he roared no more. Soon the pit was full of earth. Soon the Iron Man was buried, silent, packed down under all the soil, while the farmers piled the earth over him in a mound and in a hill. They went to and fro over the mound on their new tractors, which they'd brought since the Iron Man ate their old ones, and they packed the earth down hard. Then they all went home, talking cheerfully. They were sure they'd seen the last of the Iron Man. Only Hogarth felt suddenly sorry. He felt guilty. It was he, after all, who had lured the Iron Man into the pit.